being uh, exposed to a traumatic event um, actually changes the way we think and feel. So the world is no longer safe. You no longer want to get close to people. You feel as if something bad's about to happen, or you may feel shame or guilt or anger, which is disproportionate to that which should be experienced. So what we know is that in uh, adults, the typical response is um, with four sets of symptoms. So the first set of symptoms are called re-experiencing symptoms, and these are thoughts about the event that you don't want to come into your mind. We call those intrusive thoughts. Sometimes they can get dreams or nightmares relating to the event. Sometimes you can actually feel as if the event is happening again and you may get butterflies or you may actually physically shake. Um, and sometimes people describe what are called flashbacks, which are experiences where you can actually see, smell, taste or hear the event actually happening again. So those are called re-experiencing symptoms. The next group of symptoms are called avoidance symptoms. And what they are, are not wanting to talk about the event and not wanting to be reminded of the event in any way. So for instance, if you were kept in a room that had very bright white walls, you may find that it's very difficult to go anywhere near any white walls. Or if you were driven around in a car lots, you may find that getting back into a car is very difficult for you. The third group of symptoms are called arousal symptoms. And these are where people have poor sleep, poor concentration, they're irritable, they're jumpy, and they're ever vigilant for threats that may be around, even when they may be just walking down the street or going to the supermarket. And these sets of symptoms taken together for the basis of what's known as post-traumatic stress disorder in adults. Now in younger people, um, particularly people who are uh, well below the age of 16, the symptoms don't often come out in that particular format. What you can see there is that uh, behavioural disturbances such as um, not sleeping well, such as not being happy, not being interactive, sometimes even um, in terms of bedwetting or soiling, that sort of uh, behaviour can become uh, more prominent and it's unusual that very young children would express classic symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, they wouldn't yet have the language to say what they're thinking or feeling. So the primary treatment for conditions like PTSD is for talking therapies. So uh, the two main sorts of talking therapies that are useful for post-traumatic stress disorder are called EMDR, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. It has a very long name, but it's a talking therapy um, that gets delivered over six, 10, 12, maybe 16 sessions. The idea of this therapy is to, um, to somehow help your mind process the event. Now it seems a bit strange, but what happens is the therapist moves their fingers in front of your eyes. Uh, or, and as that happens, the picture in your mind's eye about things that are worrying you tends to change. And that picture can change to what happened when you were detained, what happened when you were younger, what's happening now. It can go any place at all. And although that seems rather strange, the evidence is really strong that EMDR therapy is a really effective treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. The other form of highly effective treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder is called trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. Again, a very long name. This again is talking therapy. And what this tries to do is to look at the underlying beliefs that you now have about why the world is not safe and why you feel under threat all the time. And by using um, evidence-based logical approaches, you can begin to alter the way you think. And as you alter the way you think, it alters the way that you feel and the way that you behave. And both EMDR and trauma-focused CBT probably help somewhere in the region of six, seven, eight out of 10 people make a good recovery and to move on and to have a successful life. It doesn't take away their memories of what happened to you. Um, it doesn't take away the fact that you've lost time and you've lost an opportunities in your life. But it does mean that you can go on not being impaired by symptoms uh, and get on with the rest of your life. There is a role for medication uh, for some people. Um, People who get depressed or people who don't respond to talking therapies can sometimes find medication has a, has a part to play in terms of either antidepressants or sleeping tablets as a short-term basis only. But the primary treatments are talking therapies. Um, and the good news is that most people who have those sorts of therapies um, will do well. I think the media paints a picture that everybody who gets detained is going to end up with some severe mental health problem. And so family members are often very worried that when their loved one isn't absolutely okay on day two that there's something wrong and they're never going to be right again. So the important message for families is they need to be a good ear for the person to speak to, they need to listen 
not to judge and certainly not at first to be giving advice about what the other person should do. And so actually the role of the family is to, is to support the person and encourage them to take steps when perhaps they're a bit afraid, afraid to do so. That might be speaking to, um, to loved ones, it might be talking to their work again, it might be going to the doctor to get some physical problems dealt with. And actually, although perhaps it sounds a bit, um, a bit boring, the quicker you can get back into a normal pattern of life, you know, going shopping, uh, taking the children out, taking the dog for a walk, the better you're going to be. Avoiding the special label that I am the person who was a hostage um, is really helpful. There is a positive outlook in life for these people, not necessarily on day one, two or three, but months and years down the line, most people have coped with that adversity really well, whether they've had some treatment to help them through the process or not. And having done that, the next challenge that they face is gonna be a, a damn sight easier than what they've been through.